Welcome back to today's video, you guys. In case you guys missed the last video where we got the car tinted, we got five all around and 35 on the front. You can barely see Peter sitting right there, but I think it's a really good combo for this car because it goes well with the unpainted body kit, which makes the car look 10 times more aggressive and I'd say in a way complete. For this manual swap, I don't plan on making it all one video because I did spend a hefty amount of money on it. So I'm gonna try to make it into a reasonable amount of videos for you guys to watch. In this video, I'll be prepping the trans so that you guys can see in depth of how this kit works for the SC300. So my whole swap kit costs around 6K. If you'd like to see the parts list, you check the video back in November when I picked up most of the parts and where I talk about them. I'm gonna get started on prepping this C009 with my adapter kit and I'll show you guys most of the steps along the way. Actually, I forgot to take a thumbnail, but my friend Nia has a great idea to put the trans next to the car. Okay. Ooh, that's not a bad picture, Nia. All right, something like this. Okay, thumbnail is done. 350Z in a SC300. What? I got sexual. I got sexual. There you go. Alright, that was kind of cringe. This thing weighs so much. Nia, it's not even that low, bro. What do you mean not that low, bro? I can't see my finger in it. Check the back. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and start prepping the CD19. And then later, the single clutch pedal and the smaller brake pedal. Okay, so in this kit, it comes with two metal pieces so you can draw your cutting lines. One for the bell housing and then one for the input shaft. It also comes with these uh, little red caps to cover up all the breather holes. It's okay. And then also, since this C99 is a six speed, it's super big. So we're gonna cut this little nub off so it's able to fit into the SE's smaller trans tunnel. So it finally came off, but we still need to shave some things down so there's no interference when we're putting on the bell housing. Things are here, or these things are here, here, all around, and then of course cut this off still. I couldn't get it off <sighs> because the thing was in the way. So the thing I forgot to do was this little input shaft like shortener, I don't know what you call it, but here, I'll show you. Sound change? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it went high pitch, that means it bottomed out. Done. What do I just. Huh? What do I just. Right you now. dropped it? <laughs> I will put this up your foot. <laughs> now I'm really gonna drop it. <laughs> Black bolts on the bottom go on the bottom. These four bolts on the bottom need a gasket maker because they see oil. We gotta make sure it's clean. Like no homo, no homo, but like actually. Okay, I'm gonna see if when I put this on, there's interfer interference with the, some parts on the thing. It's clean enough, not a lot of oil is coming out. Or it's sticking to the paper. You know? See a little bit over here. That, it doesn't need to go there. It goes around this hole. Oh, just the hole? Yeah, just the hole. So we're gonna put around here, 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 and here. That's it. Oh, okay. 
I'm pretty sure in this kit, it comes with this uh, new uh, gasket. Here's the part number. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. You like seeing me do this, Nia? You see, like, like me? Hey, man, I, don't understand. I can't speak English. I don't understand it, but. Uh... If you understand, like, how car parts work, it's not, it's not that bad. Yeah. No, it's not that complicated. That's the thing I don't know. It's not that complicated, I trust, trust me. To me, man, uh, it just looks like a big piece of metal. To be honest, I don't know how the whole thing works. Yeah. I have a general idea of how it works. That's pretty good, though. I'm gonna put some. Is it coming out of the hole? It's coming out of the hole. I'm gonna put some. Wipe one more time, make sure it's clean. Okay, then. Now, I put. It's not the most perfect job, but if it's able to seal, if it leaks, I'll redo it. But I do not want it to leak. I could reuse this, you know, because this transmission is literally new. Should I reuse it? No, because there's oil on it, so I can't reuse it. Or else um, oil will seep through, because this won't be able to bond to this. Oh. Yeah. Wait, I should put a little bit up here. And right here. Right here, so it sticks, you know, so it doesn't fall. Right? Mm -hmm. My hand's so shaky, because I'm really tired of holding the angle grinder. Boom! All right, we take out this piston because last time when I went to check it, it fell out. We don't want it falling out and being damaged. My is shaking. I'll show you what, what I mean by interference. It looks like I might have to redo it. <laughs> oh. You see, right here? It's a little too tight for my liking. I see. I mean, I'm taking it back off. Man! Right here? All right. This whole section right here. Oh, it's a bad drawing. And that's it. Can you come off? Oh, I gotta redo the gaskets. Yeah. Okay, let's try that one more time. I finally got brake clean, so the workspace will be nice and cleansy, and I won't have to worry about any leaks or anything that I did improperly. So yeah, let's uh, redo this. I forgot to mention that the kit comes with these two adapter things. The reason why they give you this is because there are variations to the C009, which is why we have this spacers that go like this. If it goes over, then like it goes over this little lip, then you need it. But since this is the newest variation where the synchros are much better for first, second, and third gear, I think, then you know, you don't need this pretty much. Okay, so this is Serial 9's shifter relocation product. Usually on the CD-09, it sits like way back here. And the SE trans hole is too short for the normal CD-09 location. They make this product, so it scoots it forward a lot more. I know it's already on, but the roll pin is too far out, so I have to push it back up. So as you can see, this little roll pin Right here is pushed out. They recommend or they tell us not to protrude. We're supposed to have a flush. So I need to get something to smack it in. Oh, it's in. Let's see if I can do it in one try. The so putting on the shifter is low key hard. So grease. Don't lose this bearing right here because it can fall out very easily when you're trying to put on the shifter. Nia. I think it's torqued. All right, so what I need to adjust next is this plate for reverse lockout. So right now I have it in fifth gear, and then you push this plate all the way to the left so that it hits this little mechanism for reverse lockout. You tighten all these bolts down, and then you gotta make sure you're able to get into sixth. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So when I got this kit, they didn't have any bolts for the bushing to the transmission. So I had to go to a junkyard and pull it off automatic. So I'm gonna take a second to install these energy suspension bushings so that 
Now just something less to worry about when I actually go to do it. Okay, so when I was putting on the transmission cross member, I didn't think that these bolts were the right one. Mainly because the head of the bolt doesn't give enough room for the socket, so I kind of want to strip it. So when you are doing a manual install, you need to shorten the length of this automatic brake pedal somehow. Either that being a manual brake pedal, or some people like to cut it and then get the, the pad of a manual brake pedal. Hope that made sense. But I already installed the manual brake pedal into the car. I don't really think you guys need to see me do that. It's just pretty self-explanatory. Explanatory, explanatory. And for a clutch, pedal there are two options OEM either through an SE300 or a Mark IV Supra or the excessive one but I've read that on the excessive clutch pedal it's like pretty flimsy and it breaks easily so I decided to go with this even though I already bought the excessive one this I was going to install but honestly seems like a lot of work and I'm pretty tired the way you install this is you have three provisional holes or a provisional outline on the chassis itself. These holes are 3 8 I'm pretty sure, and this is a one and a quarter inch hole. And people have to use drill bit for these to clutch master cylinder holes and a hole saw for the middle. But I have a step bit for this and this. The lines won't be plumbed from the master clutch cylinder to the safe cylinder on the bell housing. And this is clutch propelled, so if I keep accidentally hitting the clutch pedal it's gonna be running the clutch cylinder dry and I don't want to do that because you know more I'm gonna have to replace parts and it's gonna be more expensive than it needs to be so for that reason I'm not gonna install this next thing to tackle is this throwout bearing this throwout bearing on different year CD 009s are different in diameter uh, let me show you why, what I mean by that so when I took the piston out with the bearing and put the pressure plate fingers on top of this throwout bearing it's supposed to be sitting on this ring as opposed to this outer diameter ring. So this is wrong. So I need to go to the store real quick and get some plastic piping so I can use my vise to push this bearing out from the piston and then install the one bearing from the clutch kit onto this piston. Okay, I just came back from the store and I picked up this two inch piping on the plumbing section, I don't know. This is a one inch uh, cap, but this is a little bigger than one inch, but it's a little smaller than one inch and a quarter. So I got this with the, the hex head, whatever. I'm gonna round it off with a little grinder so that it fits right in there. But you can tell from this throw bearing for the clutch kit that's way bigger than this. So this is how you press it out. You're gonna put this into this two inch piping, and then you're gonna put this on top, and then it's gonna go on the darker edge of this piston to push it out. Okay, so I just rounded off the edges, and now I'm gonna try to press it out. Not really press it out, because I don't want to press. So I'm gonna use some wood, a good old wood method, and just hit it with the hammer. Hopefully it comes out. Okay, it came out. Now we're gonna press it in with the other. I'm gonna grease it up a little bit so it slides in easier. Like this, oops. And there, now it's flush, but one more for good measure. Uh, maybe three. There. And now with the pressure plug on, it sits a little better. It's not really centered because it's falling off a tiny bit, but you get the idea. It's a better diameter for the fingers. And the last thing to do is just to put it back on. It spins freely, and then when it comes out, Three, two, a little bit of resistance. Boom, done. And just like that, we're one step closer to getting the car manual swapped. And in the next video, the whole garage will be cleared out and we're gonna have this car, I'm gonna have this car up on all four jack stands. And I'm gonna get this all done, hopefully by myself. If not, I'll call in a couple of friends to help because you know how it is working under the car. It's, it's way more cramped and it's hard to move around. But yeah, that'll be it for today's video guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.